There's an API for just about everything these days. Let me show you how to build your own API and make money from it. Before we get started, maybe you're not sure what an API is, so let me quickly explain it. API stands for Application Programming Interface. It enables applications to talk to each other. The best way to explain it is by giving you an example. YouTube has an API. The API allows me to interact with YouTube from another application. I can retrieve channel or video information from YouTube. I can even upload a new video from my application to YouTube using their API to bridge the gap between the applications. There are four steps to creating and selling an API. First, come up with an idea. Second, build it. Third, host it. And four, sell it. The first step is the hardest. You need to come up with an API that solves a real world problem. Now, usually APIs are built by developers to solve an issue that they personally are facing. And it just happens to solve issues for other developers as well. So they sell it. Building, hosting, and selling the API, that's the easy part. For this video, I'm going to build a very basic API just to give you an example to see how the process works. I'm going to build an API that allows you to play rock, paper, scissors with the API. Now you could incorporate this API into a real rock, paper, scissors game by building out the front end. Now to build this, we're going to use JavaScript and Cloudflare workers. This will allow us to host the API for free, but only because the API is so simple. Cloudflare workers are very easy to get set up. Now you will need the CLI tool Wrangler installed. If you don't have it installed already in your terminal, just run npm i g for global at cloudflare slash wrangler and then run wrangler login to log into your account. Now you will need a free Cloudflare account. Just go to cloudflare.com to sign up. Now I'm going to open up my terminal in my project directory and run wrangler generate rock, paper, scissors. And then I'm going to open this up in VS Code. Now in the wrangler.toml file, you will need to add your account ID, which you can find in the Cloudflare Workers dashboard. This ID is not secret since this will not work if you're not properly logged in. Now we'll build out the actual API and it's just going to take a few lines of code. Right, so in our index.js, we have a basic hello world example for our Cloudflare Workers. So what we're going to add to this, we're going to start out with our choices definition. So this is going to define our choices along with which choice beats which. So this is just an array of objects. We have paper, which beats rock, scissors, which beats paper, and rock, which beats scissors. We already have our event listener here, which has our handle request event. Let's just get rid of this comment to clean things up. So here is our handle request. So the first thing that we're going to do here we're going to get a search parameter, which is going to be passed to the API. So when we call the API from our client, we are going to give the API the user's choice by passing it in a search parameter. So for example, we would do uh, myapi.com question mark choice equals rock. And so that is how we would pass in our search parameter to our API. So that search parameter is going to be choice. So we're going to request choice from our search parameters dot get choice. And then next we need to get our choice from our choices definition. So we're going to define our user choice by finding it in our choices definition up here at the top. So we're going to find our choice that where the name equals request choice. So now we know the choice name and also what it beats. So we're going to use this response and return to the client the results. So instead of returning hello worker, we're going to return a get results function that passes the user choice and then a random choice. All right, so we're going to define these functions in just a second here. Uh, we also are going to return instead of text plain, we're going to return application JSON. Now because we are returning JSON, we're going to have to stringify this. So we'll say JSON dot stringify and then just wrap this. All right, so now let's look at this get random function. So this is going to return a random choice from the worker or from the AI. So we'll define that right here. It's going to be a function get random. 
And so first we need to get a random number, right? So we're going to say random equals math.floor, math.random, and then multiply it by choices.link. So that is going to give us a random number between zero and two, right? So there's three choices here, zero, one, two. So then we're just going to return choices and then the random index. So that was pretty simple. So next let's look at the get results function. So in the get results, we're passing in here an array of the two choices. The first choice is the user's choice and the second choice is the AI's choice. So let's define that function here. We'll say function get results. And in here we'll have our choices. Now this is going to be an array. So the first thing that we're going to do is find out if the user wins by using a function is winner and passing in our choices. While we're here, let's just go ahead and define this simple function. We'll go down here and we'll say function is winner. And we're passing in here our choices. And in here, we're just going to return choices index of zero. So the first choice, and we're going to see if it beats choices with the index of one dot name. So passing in here, and we're just looking to see if the first choice beats the second choice. We know that the first choice uh, right now is the user. So we're seeing if the user beats the AI. Now we need to find out if the AI uh, beats the user. We'll say AI wins is equal to is winner. And now we need to reverse the array, right? But we don't want to actually affect the array itself. We want to make a copy of the array uh, because we're going to use the array again later. So if we just did choices dot reverse, that would actually mutate the array. And we don't want to do that. So we're going to make a copy of the array by using the spread operator. And then we'll call dot reverse and passing it into is winner that will return to us whether the AI wins. So now we need to get the actual results. So we'll say that result is going to equal a ternary operator. It's actually a combo ternary operator. So we're going to say if the user wins, we're going to return you won. Or if the AI wins, we're going to return you lose. Or if neither of those are true, we're going to return draw. So next, let's bundle this all up into a nice little object. So we're going to say results is going to be an object, the user, the user's choice, the AI and their choice. And then the result is going to be the result. So now let's just return the results. So then back up to the response here, we have our get results. So now with this get results, we're returning this object. So we're going to know what the user chose, what the AI chose and what the result is. And so now we're going to stringify that object and pass it as application JSON back to the client. And we can test this uh, right now using Wrangler. So we'll open up our terminal and we'll say uh, Wrangler dev. And now we have a development server running on localhost port 8787. So we can easily test this out using an application called Paul. So in here, we're going to create a new project and I'm just going to name this rock, paper, scissors, and then create the project. And now in here, we're going to add a new request. All right, so here we'll enter our localhost port 8787 and we'll need to add a query so let's do that add this query parameter of choice and the value we'll say is rock and let's send that so here's our response on the side we got a 200 okay and we're returned with what the user chose rock which beats scissors what the ai chose scissors which beats paper so that means we won now if we hit send again we'll get a new response this time we chose rock the AI chose rock, so it was a draw. Of course, if we change this from rock, let's say to paper, send that, the user chose paper, the AI chose paper, it's another draw, click send again, and this time we won. Now, since we built this out using Cloudflare workers, we can easily host our API, and even for free, since it's so simple. 
unless we get a crazy amount of traffic, of course. To deploy this API, all we have to do is run Wrangler Publish. And that's it. So let's test this out from Paw using our new deployed URL. So that's rock, paper, scissors, .code stacker .workers dev, And we still have our choice. We'll leave it at paper and click send. So it's still working. This time we chose paper. The AI chose scissors, so we lost. And if we click send again, this time we won. Now it's time to sell our API and start raking in the cash. To sell our API, we're going to use the sponsor of this video, the Rapid API Hub. You can sign up for free and post your API very easily. There's a link in the description below. All right, so once you've signed up, go to My APIs. And then we're going to add a new API. So we're going to name this Rock Paper Skizzers. And then a short description. I uh, will just say Play Rock Paper Scissors via API. Uh, the category, I guess that would be games, gaming, and then add API. All right, for a long description, we'll say give a user choice and the API will randomly select an AI choice and respond with the choices and winner. All right, alternatively, you can add a logo, a website, and we've got the category already set. We don't have any terms of use. So we'll just hit save there. All right, so now we need to... Uh, enter our base URL. All right, so we have this handy little guide here step by step. So base URL is next. We're going to configure that. All right, so that was rock, paper, scissors, dot code stacker, dot workers, dot dev. All right, so now we have our base URL. Next, we'll need to add an endpoint. So it's going to be a REST endpoint. So we'll click that. I will name this. This is a uh, choice. And then description is going to be users choice. Alternatively, we can add some documentation, which is always good. So now we have our query parameters. So let's enter that. It, our query parameter is choice. It is a string. An example value is rock. And this is required. Okay, so now below this, we have uh, some sample code that we could run to, to test this out. We can select a different language. Let's just go to JavaScript to fetch. And this is what that would look like. So notice here that it is calling a rapid API API instead of our actual API. So this way we can put our API on the marketplace and users don't see the actual endpoint. All right, so let's go ahead and save to test this endpoint and then test the endpoint. And we can see we have some responses here. And here's the response body. So we got our user, which selected rock, AI selected rock, and so it was a draw. So we can see that it is functioning and we can create an example from this response so that whenever someone is looking at our API in the pub, they can see an example of the response that they might get from our API. All right, let's go ahead and save that. So next, go up, let's go up here to uh, plans and pricing. And if we scroll down here, we have a basic plan of $0 a month, so we can edit this. So we can set it to a monthly subscription or pay per use. We can set the price for the monthly subscription for the basic plan. We'll leave it at zero, uh, but we are going to rate limit it since it's free. So let's say a maximum of 100 requests per minute. And then we can say the quota. We don't want it to be unlimited for free, right? So we'll say, uh, let's set a monthly limit of 100 or 1000. And we can set this as a soft limit, which means that once they hit this limit, they will uh, begin to be charged per use for overages. Or we can set it as a hard limit so that when they hit this, they can no longer use it until the next month, right? So this is great for uh, a developer just to test something out. That's great. But if they actually start using it in production, you want them to upgrade to a paid plan. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. And we can also add a pro plan. So let's say on the pro plan, let's say this is maybe $10 a month and we're not going to rate limit it. And let's set this to requests and then it's going to be monthly again. And let's say uh, for the pro plan, they'll get a hundred thousand requests per month and we'll set a soft limit. So they're getting a hundred thousand requests for $10 a month soft limit, any request over that, let's set it to um, one cent. 
All right, and then we'll save that. And so then you can add even more plans, an ultra plan or a mega plan. So now that we have all of this set up, let's go ahead and make this public. So let it rain request. And we just need to set this to public. Make API public. And that's it. So now our API is in the hub. So if we go over to the hub and we search for rock, paper, scissors, there it is. Let's select that. And there it is. If you have a popular API, you could make lots of money from it. Just look at Twilio as an example. This is an API that makes over a billion dollars a year. Start thinking of ideas. Look around the Rapid API hub for inspiration and give Rapid API a try. That's going to be it for this video. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.